I'm Gina Terrio, and I am a broker agent here at Remax of Boulder, and I'm with my stepdaughter, who is here in town uh, to promote her first album, and her name's Abigail Dell. I'm Abigail, and I live in North Carolina, and so we've driven out here to Boulder and Denver to play some shows. We're going to be playing at the No Name Bar, and we've played at the Laughing Goat, and we're playing out in Denver at Herman's Highway and visiting family and doing a house show. So when did you start playing? When I was 14, I had my I got my first guitar and have been playing ever since. When I was about 21, maybe, I started studying classical guitar and studied for six years and then came back to the acoustic guitar and started writing songs. And so I've been writing songs for probably 10 years now. And how long did it take you to work on your album that just came out? Technically a year, but it's sort of been a, an interesting journey from moving to Florence, Italy, to moving to Maine, and writing all these songs on the journey, which is about seven years. Um, but when I actually decided to make the album, it took a year. And who did you work with on the album? Um, I worked with a guy named Doug Williams, who's based out of Winston-Salem. And for anybody who's a fan of the Avett Brothers, he actually did the Avett Brothers' first album. Okay. And what, what would you describe your music as? Um, that's a good question. We finally figured out uh, something to say, and now I've forgotten it. It seems so perfect. But I, I have a sort of a finger-picking style. I bring that classical finger-picking over, maybe similar to Jim Croce or James Taylor. And then I'd say that my voice is somewhere between Sarah McLaughlin and Janis Joplin, which is a huge range, but it's got this bluesy edge when I really want it. But then I like to have that soft mellowness. Um, and then I play with a bass player who is actually my fiance, and he also plays light percussion. So we take it like one notch above folk, I think, maybe folk rock. What made you decide to go full into music? Because that wasn't what you were doing previously, right? Right. I was um, the executive director of a nonprofit, and I decided that I would work for another nonprofit and <laughs> become a full time musician. No, that's not true. It's, um, it's been really rewarding to become a full time musician. And it was just that voice that had always said, that's what you should do. And everybody always told me you should be doing this. And it was just really scary to pursue music full time. So um, October of 2015, I decided that I had to try it. And I've been doing it ever since. And then do you have any connection here with Boulder? I do. You here? I do. I <laughs> do. You bring Maybe me. I think I might have a little bit to do with it. <laughs> but I, I've been coming out in Boulder since I was 14. And then I had one of my first jobs here when I must have been 16, the summer that I turned 16, because I could drive. And I worked in Iwat for a daycare there. And it, I just fell in love with Boulder. I was here when Jerry Garcia died. And then, like, all of Boulder was in mourning. And I barely knew who he was. And I was like, oh, wow, the power of music and Boulder. And everybody was, like, drumming and on Pearl Street. And so I've always loved coming out here. So is there a place that you're hoping to see while you're here that you haven't seen yet? I remember Estes Park. We took a trip Estes a Park. couple mm -hmm. of times. So we'll definitely make it there. And then I have to go have tea at the tea house here in Boulder. Yes. <laughs> That's on the list. Are you going to play a song for us? I will. Okay. This is a song um, that I had written in Northern Ireland. I was on a bus going to Dublin to fly out, and I had spent a week as part of a play, and we had performed in Northern Ireland. And I had met some of the best friends that I have in my life. We met over there and spent the week together, and then we were all flying back. And one day we spent in Newcastle, which is this tiny little town where the Mourne Mountains meet the ocean, and we hiked in the mountains, and then we waded in the ocean, and it was just like the perfect day. So this is that song. Thank you. 
<laughs> it's fun to watch you do all of the yeah. picking from this angle. I yeah, can really see so angle. much. Yeah, I can see. I was like, there's wow. a lot to it. That was amazing. Thanks for having me out here. <laughs> so what's next, though, for you? I mean, after you play here, what do you plan on doing next? We have a really busy schedule for June and July, and then in August, we'll be back in North Carolina for June and July. We've got about 16 shows in June and almost that many in July. And then I'm coming back out in August. The Folk Alliance here does, yes, find me. The Folk Alliance <laughs> does, um, they have a song school. And so a lot of songwriters from this region come out to, to you know, songwrite mm -hmm. and network and just That's be with cool. the tribe. And they have one in North Carolina, but it was this past weekend. And I thought, well, since I'm missing the one in North Carolina, I'm just going to fly back to Colorado. So I'll be back here in August. And who doesn't want their kid to come back and visit them again <laughs> twice in one summer? I'm super Ooh. excited. This so. is our musical exploratory trip to yeah. Boulder in Denver. Florence was um, 2000. Eight, I think 2008 and I was there for three months and that was sort of like the beginning of this journey of I don't like what I'm doing I don't like where I am and I have to go find my path and that was like the first step on the trail and the trail wound up to Maine and then back home to North Carolina and mm -hmm. now I'm I've always craved like New England and Europe and I think like those older like internal and I wrote all these songs like in my little internal cold New England world. And now I'm craving out west, like big, open, like what's on the horizon? I don't know. That's my <laughs> little wandering path. So, yeah. And the next album will have a totally different it song will. style, right? Yeah. Because you, well, I mean, it'll still be within the same realm, but yeah, but different because you won't be inside. Maybe right. You'll be out here. They're more yeah. upbeat, they're not as mellow. And I'm also playing with Jason Duff. He plays bass and percussion. We're engaged, and so, <laughs> so that has fun. probably lightened up the level of the music too. When you're all happy and you're engaged, yeah. right? So. No breakup songs on this album. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so that'll that'll be cool. Yeah, you know, the difference. But she has been doing this since she was a kid. Yeah. But she's she's had that passion and and been playing the guitar and taught yeah. herself yeah. to play originally in church. So, okay. yeah, I grew up playing or singing in the choir. And it's really cool because you realize there's a language to all those old songs, and no matter where you go, people know those old hymns. <laughs> Regardless of faith, mm -hmm. they're like they're part of the culture and the country, mm -hmm. and it's kind of cool. There's like this language. Mm -hmm. If you're somewhere and you're playing with another musician, and they say, "Well, what songs do you know?" And you, you know nothing in common. Okay, fine, let's play a hymn. <laughs> <laughs> Everybody knows a hymn. <laughs> Everybody's grandmother somewhere down the line made them learn at least one hymn. Yeah, sure enough. Yeah, so, right. Mm -hmm. So if someone wants to pick up your CD, what do they need to do? How would they get a copy? I have a website. It's abigaildowd.com. And then there's links to iTunes and Amazon and CD Baby and Bandcamp and Spotify and everywhere. And non-tech <laughs> mom, but okay. <laughs> yeah, it's almost everywhere albums are sold except Walmart. Awesome. Thank you again. Thanks so for having me. I know. So I have